Hey, can you hear me? I can. Thank you so much for making the time. I appreciate it. Sure thing. And I know you're um, in between meetings today, so I, I will do my best to not take up a ton of your time. Um, yeah. uh, so, John, I had sent you that. Oops, sorry. I had sent you yeah. that question that I had received from a viewer, asking, yeah. you know, if, if my employer mandates the COVID nineteen vaccine, I take the vaccine and I have an adverse reaction to it or an adverse uh, effect from it that requires mm -hmm. me to get medical treatment. Yep. Does my employer pay for the cost of that medical treatment? And how does that work in relation to workers' comp? Can you help me understand that? Sure, it's a good question, of course. And unfortunately, I can't give a, a categorical answer because every case could be different. It's you know what? John, true. Sorry, oh. Can I put you on pause for just one second? Are you on yep. a laptop? Yes. Would you mind taking your screen and just kind of tilting it toward yourself a little bit so that your the top oh. of your head is closer to the top of the box here? Is that? That's much better. Yep. I just wanted to make sure you weren't, you know. Oh, yeah. Thank you. I have transition lenses, so I tend to tip it down. So I hit the oh. sweet spot, but I'll, uh, it's are you fine. Okay? Are you okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Absolutely. I, I'm yep. sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. and I know. It, okay. I understand it's kind of a case by case basis, right? Yep. But it would certainly be a factor that the, re the vaccine was required uh, by the employer. So for what I would encourage folks who have questions to do is, is call the board because then in each, each individual situation, we can give them more tailored um, input on what might, might happen there. But an employee, let's say, who gets the vaccine, employers told them to do it and they have an adverse reaction. If it's going to be something that workers comp might cover, the employee needs to make sure they tell their employer so they're notified that there was the adverse reaction. At that point, the employer is supposed to fill out a first report of injury. If there isn't a day or more of lost time, they're supposed to give a copy to the employee. If the, I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm on mute. Is it, okay. If there is a day or more of lost time, right? Then they have to fill out something or if they, if there's it, not. Either way, they fill out the first report of injury okay. and give it to the employee. If there's a day or more of lost time, they file the first report with us here at the board. Um, but the other piece the employee would need to do is if there are medical expenses, let's say, is ask the employer or if they know who the insurer is, the insurance company to pay those bills. At that point, the employer may pay them, in which case they're all set. If the employer does not think they're responsible for the payment of those bills, they'll have to file what's called a notice of controversy, essentially saying we're denying your claim, we don't think we're responsible. And at that point, point, the board's formal processes kick into gear. So a troubleshooter will contact the employee and try to resolve things informally. Uh, if that doesn't work, there's mediation and ultimately, if need be, uh, a formal hearing. Um, just in general, I can tell you COVID has not created a lot of litigation here at the Workers' Compensation Board. So, you know, my hope is most of these things would be resolved short of us having to get involved as an agency. Gotcha. Yeah, that's a big help. Um, th this person, I think, seem, seemed uh, concerned or interested about the fact that, you know, it, it, it is legal for an employer to mandate a vaccine. And I think they were concerned that if they were to get the vaccine and have an adverse reaction, that they would then be on the hook for paying for their own medical treatment if they perhaps weren't planning on getting the vaccine, mm -hmm. uh, aside from the fact that the, the, the employer is mandating it. Um, sorry, I was you were going to say something. Yeah, so another thing I can add is if the person has health care, um, either through their employer or otherwise, and the employer or the insurer says, we're not going to pay this under workers' compensation, they can submit it to the health insurer who is supposed to pay while the, the workers' comp piece is uh, sorted out. So there is a process in place there as well. Obviously, if the person doesn't have any insurance at all, um, then they might you know, need to come to the board quicker or, or sooner in that situation. Is there, is there a situation you see where, you know, if, if they go through the, you know, the normal process without the board, right? If they, if they file it through their insurance um, mm -hmm. and only a portion of it is covered either for you know, deductible reasons or, or something like that, you know, uh, who would then be on yep. the hook for the rest of that money? Is it the employer or is it the employee or do they file a work, workers' comp claim? How does that work? 
So they can, again, they can send it through their insure, health insurer and whatever the terms of that health policy would cover that situation. If they then, so let's say they have a deductible of a certain amount that they've paid, if they can still file the workers' compensation claim, and if they are successful, they'll be made whole. So the payment could go to them if they have out-of-pocket expenses, or they would reimburse the health and care ins uh, health insurer the costs that they uh, paid while the dispute was pending. Okay. There was a there was a um, employee lawyer, or sorry, um, an employee rights attorney that I was speaking to yesterday on the phone who had mentioned something about if there's seven days of lost time or, or something about a mm -hmm. threshold of seven days, can you sure. just reiterate that and what that distinction is and why that's important? Yep. So if you're injured at work, um, there's really two pools of benefits we think about mainly. One would be the medical bills like you're talking about. And another would be that the injury you have incurred has caused you to miss time from work. If you miss um, one through seven days of work, there's a waiting period in our statute, uh, which says you're not entitled to be paid for those first seven days. Once you get to day eight, if you're still out for that injury, you're entitled to start being paid. Um, so days eight through 14, week of compensation would be paid. If you're out 15 days, they keep paying, and then they have to also go back and pay you for that first week of lost time. So seven days is the threshold to get to, to be entitled to start receiving uh, a lost time benefit as we refer to it here. Okay, and, and, and more for my own understanding, I just wanna make sure I'm understanding this probably through like a hypothetical example. You know, say I were to have an extremely adverse reaction to a COVID-19 vaccine, one that landed me in the hospital for, mm -hmm. um, we're gonna say 16 days. Uh, I would not be paid for the, through that first week those first seven days. After day eight, I would start getting paid up until day 14. And then once I'm at day 15 or 16 in the hospital or, or missing work, then I would get paid for that week beforehand. Did I understand that correctly? Yep. Okay. Exactly. Right. Okay. As long as it's all related, of course. And they don't have to be, not to complicate it unnecessarily, they don't have to be consecutive. If you missed seven days, felt a little better, then missed a few more days, it's just a total of those numbers of days have to be missed in order for the entitlement to arise. How, how would a person prove that their time out of work is related to an adverse reaction to the COVID-19 vaccine? Has that been a discussion at all for Workers' Compensation Board? Not specifically, because we haven't, I haven't seen any of these cases really come through, but it would be the same, I imagine, as in any case, which would be you got the shot and you're having a certain reaction. If it's not clear why you are feeling the way you're feeling, you would go to a doctor, right? A doctor might say, oh yeah, I recognize this. This is related to the vaccine, in which case you would have medical proof that your symptoms were related to the injury. Of course, if they say, no, this is something entirely different, you don't have a worker's comp claim at that point. And the cases we would see here, of course, your doctor might say, yeah, I think it's related. The insurance company's doctor might say, I don't think it's related. Now you've got a dispute and competing you know, opinions on that point, but that's essentially how that would unfold. Got it. And, and if I'm the employee, what types of documentation do I need to make sure that I have in order to have a successful claim, I guess, for, for mm -hmm. workers' compensation, should it meet the lost time benefit threshold? So again, you want to make sure the employee wants to make sure they've notified their employer that it happened and they Writing? have, they don't have to. I okay. mean, I'm trained as a lawyer, so I would always say, yeah, absolutely put it in writing. But yeah. <laughs> as long as right, there's some acknowledgement. And if the, if the employer it happens in the employer's presence, they obviously know about it, but um, make sure the employer is notified of the injury within 60 days of its occurring. Um, let them know that there's, you, you're losing time and or have medical bills related to the injury. And then uh, it'll sort of take care of itself from there because the insurance company or the employer will likely ask for some documentation. But one thing for sure you'd want to have is something from a doctor saying this is related to, in this case, uh, the vaccination for uh, COVID-19. Because uh, without that medical piece, you may not be able to prove your case is related if it's if it comes to that later in the process. And have you guys, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and as I, I 
I'll say it over and over again. If folks have any questions, they should definitely call the board. We have different regional offices throughout the state, and there's always somebody who's available who can help uh, talk people through uh, some of the beginning parts, the basic parts of the of the system. And I mean, you had said up to this point, luckily, there hasn't really been a whole lot that the Workers' Compensation Board has had to deal with as it relates to COVID-19, right? Yeah, there hasn't really been litigation. It seems like most, there have been obviously cases and they've arisen out of the workplace, but they've all seem to have been minor cases or resolved between the parties without the board getting involved at all. Okay, good. Um, and, and no anticipation, I guess, that there would be a spike in anything, you know, as it relates to people who are required by their employer to get vaccines. I wouldn't think so. Claims? Okay. No. Um, 